Um, see, I, I didn't want to do this video, but I think people have been asking me to have my say, and I thought, you know, okay, you know what? I'm, I might as well. I have to I have to have my say here. So I was, I was discussed with my mom, and my mom was like, no. This is something different from Nigeria that Peter OB is gonna win. Peter OB is gonna win. And I said to my mom that let's wait. I bet you that Tinumbu wins. But she was no 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 no, you don't know what is happening, you know, the, the, the country's hot and things are different. I was like, I know Nigeria. I remember that I know that country that I lived in through the nineties and so forth. And I know how deep seated the corruption is, how deep seated um the Greed is. I know that things, things ain't going to change like, like this. Lo and behold, look at where we are right now. You see, there is too much money to be made by the very few in maintaining the corruption of Nigeria. That's the issue there. Um, so when you're just looking at just the election fraud, your votes meaning nothing, there are 90 million registered voters but we only have 20 to 30 million of the votes that have been collated it doesn't add up it, it, it really doesn't add up you are giving 400 billion naira for an electronic voting system where the results are going to be uploaded in real time online for people to to view somehow it doesn't work and people now have to be using pen and paper and antipex i wonder where that 400 billion naira went to though Someone, someone has it. It's someone because it ends with the tech. So someone, someone has that, that that money. So when you just look at this, it's very sad. Like for me, what I that's why I didn't even want to do this video because it is so sad and so unfortunate. Because a country with so much potential, so much resources, that can do so much, they keep holding themselves back. They keep holding themselves back. Because I was, I was thinking about it before I did this video here. Um, because I want to just check something. Um, I want to check something real quick. So, the age of Mr. Tinumbu, he's 70. So, Tinumbu is 70. And Peter will be age 61. So, you know what I, I said to myself? I said that. I feel that there should be a particular age gap of when you should be president. I feel that 50 to 65 is a good bracket to be president. I think that's a good... And so people who should run for president should be between the ages of 50 to 65. Younger than 50, I feel you're too young. You don't have enough of the experience or wisdom needed to, to lead. Older than 65... You are out of touch with the, with the youth. You can't connect with the youth. You need to be old enough to have enough wisdom, to, to have enough experience, to know the world and have years of knowing the world and how the world works. And, but you also need to be young enough to be connected with the youth, with the now. The thing of Peter Obi's um, campaign was he was connecting with the, with the youth. And here's the thing. You can't construct a country for now you could construct a country for 10 years from now 50 years from now 100 100 years from now 200 years from now you've got to look at now into the future and to do that you've got to have the youth a 50 year old person isn't going to be here so sorry it's it's a 60 70 year old person is not going to be here in 50 in 50 years time no yeah somebody who is 50 years old they probably won't be around in 50 years time Somebody who's 18, 16, 17, somebody who's 18, 20, 20, 20 21, is likely they could be here in, in 50 years' time, 30 years' time, 40 years' time. So you have to appeal to the youth. They, I feel that they are the most important demographic. All, the people are all important, everyone's important, but I feel the most important demographic are the youth because those are the guys that will lead the future of your country. Because you have to ensure that your country says what's up for now. Or what's up 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now. So, and that's what Peter Obi was doing. Because you don't judge a country by how the 1% live. You judge a country by how the 99% live. That's how you truly judge a, a, a country. So if you go to a country and 
everything's amazing, it looks so good, oh, look at everything. That's, but you're just in a very small section, and the rest is dead poor. Oh, that's into the real country. A proper country is walk the streets, go through, go everywhere with the regular people and so forth. How do the regular people live? How do the blue collar people live? How do the 99% live? How do the middle class live? How do the lower to middle, middle class live? How big is your lower class? How big is your poverty line? How many people are out on the streets? That's how you judge a country. Don't judge a country by how the rich are, are living, how they want to live. No. A, a proper country is how do the majority live? What is the living standard of the majority? And Nigeria have failed at that for a long time. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. You know, Peter B wants, wants to fight this in court, which he should, because from, because I already, I just need to see proof. I already knew what was going to happen. The fix was already in. But when you just look online and looking at just how these officials, you know, the INEC who are the people who run the voting, what they've been doing and how they've been forging the results, putting in false re results, it's like, oh, man. Oh, wow. So... Because I've, because just speaking to just my Nigerian friends, guys here and guys in Nigeria, you know, and they've just been saying to me that like this 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 country's a mess, like they're just dis disgusted, you know, like a lot of my friends was it's just just it's just laughing and just how me messed up it is. But everyone is just like, what's a mess? Like what's what's a mess? Like it's crazy. So a guy has been announced president, and the mood around the country is what's a mess. Funny, <laughs> there is no jubilation, no celebration. Everyone just like what. Just, just a mess because because people really want to believe that okay oh this is what it is let's just go through you know it's like you have to have a proper process your vote has to mean something like what's the point in voting when billions of votes are discarded where your vote is now forged it's now changed then what's the point in in, in voting you know because I was watching the Peter Obi conf um, press conference and like a young lady asked that, you know, what faith should the youth have in voting? When it's always that their vote doesn't mean anything because the establishment is just going to forge the results. You know, and my thing is that when you look at that, how can the international community take Nigeria seriously? <laughs> how like if you cannot have free, fair, proper elections, using electronic devices in 2020-2023 how can the social community take you guys seriously you, you, you you're viewed as a joke okay this is nigeria you, you produce oil you produce oil my mother states delta states produce freaking oil that's why you have shell pretty much lodged in there and so forth so the resources are there the, the money is there but you can't have full electronic um elections but the thing is that this stuff can happen but as i said again too much money is being made for Nigeria to not have electricity to still be in this very corruptive state. People people make, make money off of this. That's why it's the 1% and the 99%. So we'll see what happens, man. But um, I mean, if you're Nigerian, especially if you're Nigerian in the diaspora, if you're African in the diaspora, because Nigeria is supposed to be the beacon of Africa. But if you're African in the diaspora, it is incredibly, incredibly, Sad. Incredibly sad.